In lesson three, we are going to talk about severe weather. Sometimes the water cycle can lead to severe weather. Severe weather includes thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Here shows all air currents moving upward and currents being mixed, which is, are the first two stages of a thunderstorm. Thunderstorms can form in different ways. Often, the first stage of a thunderstorm has strong, quickly rising currents of moist air. Clouds grow as moisture condenses in the rising air. The clouds have both ice crystals and water droplets. In the storm's second stage, precipitation starts to fall, which pulls some air down with it. The storm now has both upward and downward moving currents, as shown by the arrows in the chart. In the storm's final stage, all the currents are moving downward, and the clouds get smaller as precipitation falls. Remember from the last chapter that condensation Remember from the last chapter that the condensation and precipitation of thunderstorms are parts of the water cycle. Different areas of a thunderstorm cloud have either positive or negative electrical charges. They may be caused by the precipitation colliding in the air currents of the cloud. The negative charges on the cloud cause positive charges to gather in the ground below making the lightning go from negative to positive, from the clouds to the ground. Lightning is an electrical spark moving between areas of opposite charge. Lightning can warm air to 30,000 degrees Celsius in a fraction of a second. This high temperature causes the air to expand so rapidly that it makes vibrations in the air. We hear these vibrations as thunder. What we see as one flash of lightning is often many flashes of both positive and negative charges going up and down. Lightning often hits tall objects. If you cannot get inside a building during a thunderstorm, move away from trees or high towers. Stay low, but do not lie on the ground. But clouds can cause another kind of storm, the thunderstorm. What turns a rain cloud into a thunderstorm cloud is size. To get a thunderstorm cloud, you've got to have that development of that cloud increasing all the time to make a bigger and bigger cloud. As a cloud grows, drops of water and bits of ice knock and rub against each other, generating a lot of static electricity. Just as in a battery, the electricity organizes itself into opposite poles. One end of the cloud is positive and the other is negative. When the charges move toward each other, a giant spark is the result. This is lightning. It's five times hotter than the sun. It makes the very air explode, which we hear as thunder. At first, the bolts of lightning may go from cloud to cloud. But as the amount of static charge increases, the lightning can strike the ground. It goes for the nearest object, which is usually the highest. Every year in the United States, lightning strikes more than 40 million times. When you're watching the weather forecast and you hear that a, there is a severe storm watch, that means that severe thunderstorms with high winds and hail might form. They aren't there yet, so it might happen. When you hear that there's a severe storm warning, you, you know that severe thunderstorms have formed and you should prepare for them. Get inside as soon as possible. Next, we are going to talk about tornadoes. 
Many things happen as a tornado forms. Layers of wind in a storm blow at different speeds or in different directions. Between these layers, a column of air starts spinning like a log rolling on its side. Then, upward winds lift one end of this spinning column. Downward winds push down on the other end. This spinning column of air is called a funnel cloud. It is called a tornado if it touches the ground. Tornadoes usually last only a few minutes, but they can leave a path of many kilometers long and hundreds of meters wide. Winds in a tornado move at hundreds of kilometers per hour. These winds can move cars and buildings around with ease. Thunderstorms can be even more dangerous than this. If conditions are right, they can become tornadoes. Tornadoes spiral slowly across the landscape, packing wind speeds of up to 300 miles an hour. But how does this kind of devastating storm develop? In the United States, moist warm breezes from the Gulf of Mexico sweep up. And very high in the atmosphere, strong cold winds blow down from Canada. Sometimes thunderstorms formed from warm, moist air will get so large that they burst into the path of the icy northern wind. This puts the twist in the twister. At the bottom, the clouds are blowing one way, and at the top, the other. From the ground, you see what's known as a supercell, with a fast spinning center. The spinning lowers the air pressure, sending the supercell's twisting center down from the thundercloud until it touches the ground. And that's when the trouble starts. That's a tornado. Tornadoes look like they're destroying things by sucking them up. But what they really do is just batter with sheer wind power. Another picture of a thunderstorm or a tornado. Here you see a satellite picture of a, of a hurricane forming in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricanes get their energy from warm ocean water. When water vapor from the ocean condenses, it releases energy. Under the right conditions, this energy builds and drives the wind of a hurricane. Once it is over land, the hurricane's energy is reduced. Even though the swirling winds of a hurricane are not as fast as a tornado's winds, the winds of these ocean storms are more destructive. Why do you think that is? Well, first, hurricanes can last for days possibly hitting several locations. Second, a hurricane is hundreds of kilometers wide. Third, hurricanes can result in huge waves that cause severe damage and flood the shore. Heavy rains can also cause floods in areas further inland. While tornadoes are damaging storms, they are small compared to the biggest storm of all. Hurricane, typhoon, cyclone, these are names in different regions of the Earth, all referring to the same whirling mass of waterlogged air. This huge storm starts as a thunderstorm that forms over warm ocean water and drops rain. But more wet air moves up from the surface of the ocean to replace it. The Earth's rotation causes vertical winds to spiral around the eye, a calm center. Heat, rain, more heat, wind, more rain, it continues to fuel itself from the warm waters. Hurricanes do run out of fuel as they reach land. Without those warm tropical waters beneath them, they slow down and die out. Meanwhile, they hammer coastal communities. Rain washes land from mountaintops. The ocean waves rise to 20, 30, or even 40 feet and flood the coastal areas. It's a terrifying storm.
Storms are a natural weather phenomenon, and their power should be respected. We can't stop them from happening, but we can be prepared for them and protect ourselves from them, and in some cases, get out of their way. Here's your notes page. You will be comparing tornadoes and hurricanes. So the characteristics of tornadoes go here in this section. Hurricanes go here. And any characteristics they have in common go in. The safest place to be during a tornado is in a basement. If you do not have a basement, go into a place that is windowless in the center of the building or house you are in.